Hi, thanks for listening to Patrons and Partnerships. Our guest today is Brianna Chestine, the founder and executive director of Gainesville's Heat. This interview has been edited for length and clarity and has been split into two parts. The second half of the interview will post on October 21st. Hi, Brianna. Thank you for being with us here today. Could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, so my background is in health education behavior. I have a master's degree in health education behavior. I currently am the founder and the executive director, both of the Heat Center of Gainesville. Uh, We started, I want to say about four years ago, almost. Uh, We started four years ago at the actual library partnership, (laughs) which is funny. We started at the library partnership and library uh, headquarters, library teaching, talking about nutritional health um, and sexual health. My background is in sexual health. So I have a background in sexual health where I was an HIV tester. Uh, I did go to UF, so go Gators. I am from Gainesville, go Gators again. And I'm another Gator because I went to Santa Fe, so go Gators three times. I also went to the University of South Florida. That's where I got my degree in public health. And my master's degree is in health education and behavior. I do write poetry. um, I do play the guitar and I do take my classes, which is yoga. I do that. And also I teach. I'm a teacher for seventh and eighth grade science here in Jacksonville. So I'm in Jacksonville. I've been in Jacksonville for about two years now. Um, The center is still in Gainesville, operates daily. But yeah, it's a little bit more about me. (laughs) Oh, and I like the I like the beach. I love the beach. I live very close to the beach. Um, So that's one of my favorite places to go to do yoga. Nice. Is that why you moved to Jacksonville? No, I moved to Jacksonville because I started working at the Mayo Clinic. So I used to work at the Mayo Clinic two years ago and I moved to Jacksonville just to work in clinical research. Okay. What does your clinical research focus on? Or are you still working there? Uh, No, I'm actually just a teacher here um, at a middle school. Uh, I teach seventh, eighth grade science. The research that I focused in was breast cancer oncology with Pfizer. So Pfizer is the one that made the vaccine for us. Uh, I used to work for them at the Mayo Clinic. Um, working on breast cancer trials. I also worked for HIV in the University of Florida. So I was in epidemiology there. Um, So I did work at the University of Florida in research and that's where I started. And then I migrated over to the largest nonprofit, which is the the Mayo Clinic. Uh, And I started working there back in, I believe, 2019. You've worn a lot of hats. You've worked in a lot of different fields. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of hats. (laughs) What inspired you to found Heat? What inspired me? Well, Heat was created, I want to say, when I was eight years old. Um, I did want to be a teacher. I wanted my own business while I was eight years old. I wrote that down in my journal that I still have to date. Um, So I did find Heat because that's my um, passion. My goal is health. Um, I wanted to know why my family was um, sick. Uh, When I was like in the first grade, my family, uh, we had illnesses. And I, I just followed that passion, helping and caring for other people. However, heat uh, came about in 2019, or actually 2018. Uh, I was in my master's degree at UF, and I started looking and researching uh, a lot about the social determinants of health and how health is encompassed in sexual, mental, physical, and community health. It's all tied together. So heat became a product of actual my master's degree. So I was actually working (laughs) at heat, teaching the classes. I was the first guinea pig teaching the classes at the library. And then um, I was working for UF. I did work for UF for my department, as well as I tutored. And I did volunteer work around health and wellness. So what really inspired me to just go off and just (laughs) be an entrepreneur is my love for health and education. I love to, to research. I love to help others, but also my family. My family was the biggest motivator because I really wanted to know the outcomes of why Black and Brown families, we have this um, segue, you know, get, getting the best care, getting the best health care. And we're usually intentionally the last people to receive health care. So I built the foundation in HEAT to encompass holistic health, meaning everyone, it's health for everyone, everyone. And it's minority focused as well. We teach a lot about healthy eating, healthy eating habits. Also, we teach a lot about financial health, financial health planning. So we're very unique in a center because we teach all of it and you get all of it in one location. You don't have to go to the bank (laughs) to get financial planning. 
Um, you don't have to go to a nutritional a nutritionist to get nutritional planning. You don't have to go anywhere else to get yoga. We, we do it all in one location. And that's what brings us our clientele. That w- that's what's bringing us people that come on back, people like yourselves, um, because no one has ever done that in Gainesville successfully yet, but us. Oh, that's why I found the heat because of my family, mm-hmm. which is very near and dear to my heart. But I really wanted to know the culture of health and wellness in the brown and minority background sense, right? Mm-hmm. Because I come from Gainesville. I am the minority a population in Gainesville. I come from that east side part of Gainesville. So I kind of understand where that disconnect is coming from because I lived it and I still am living. It. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes. That's what inspires me the most about heat is because it's built on a foundation that is from the heart. I'm not for the monetary values. Uh, we're a nonprofit, of course. Um, however, we have a lot of insight on our programs and our courses that we do tailor to different specific groups of minorities, which is huge. We've grown so much over the years. <laughs> Yeah, I can see there being a lot of demand for something like heat where it's truly holistic, not just looking at immediate health needs, exercise and nutrition and things like that, but the actual community issues, the extenuating circumstances like financial stressors and other life stressors that affect your health that often a traditional doctor won't address. Right. And we, we, we take that to in consideration because we go really deep on what is affecting the person. Mm-hmm. Right. What are, what are what are you battling? Right. We want to know what you're battling. And often those are those stressors. Right. Not enough hours of sleep. You know, maybe not enough money to get fresh fruits and vegetables. Right. We've done a lot of segments where we, we bring the farmers in. We bring the farmers in so the farmers can advertise their fruits and vegetables that they have. They have fresh fruits and vegetables that you can get with food stamps mm-hmm. that you can get with, um, you know, if you're on low income in, in low-income housing, brung, brung those folks in as well. So there's a lot of things that we tie really well with the community because it, it's needed. Yeah. <laughs> if if we don't build anything on the east side of Gainesville, we, we probably won't survive. <laughs> so I've been bringing in farmers. I've been bringing in, you know, those people that I know could help the east side of Gainesville with that food desert because we do have a food desert in the east side of Gainesville where we don't have markets, which we probably will get one very soon, which I'm like, I'm, Hey, I'm not opposed to that, (laughs) but we need, we need more farmers. We need more things happening on that East side of Gainesville because it's been bare for almost 30 years and I'm almost 30. So that should tell you something. (laughs) Yeah. Your entire life. My entire life. Yeah. I've never seen anything on the East side of Gainesville, which is sad because we need it. (laughs) The city has been talking about doing something for the East side of Gainesville. Yeah. As long as I've lived in the area, which I've been in the area my entire life, and you grew up on the east side. So I think you pretty much covered the history of the organization and its goals. What are some of the services and events that HEAT offers? Oh, wow. We offer so much. Um, Are you ready? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Ready for it. (laughs) Now we have a new program, which is our nonprofit mentorship program. That program is directed by me, is facilitated by me. It is something that I hold dear and clear to my heart because I didn't have help starting HEAT, (laughs) a nonprofit. I did not have help when I started. So this is my thing that I give back to the community. If you want to open your own business, we have an actual nonprofit mentorship program that people can go to and open their own business. We provide the documents. We provide everything that you need, basically the business plan template, all of that from start to finish for people that want to start up their own nonprofit. That one is the biggest one that we have right now going that it's going to restart next two weeks, probably Uh, September 20th is the start date. We've had that program since the summer and it's doing awesome. We have over 10 people that graduated have received grants for their actual nonprofit, (laughs) which is amazing to me. And then on top of that, um, it is self-guided. So it's all online. So people can actually register online. They can take the classes whenever they want to, because it's open whenever they sign up. Basically they pay $500. We do accept payment plans for that class. So it's not all 500 do at the same time. (laughs) It's crazy. We have started that because we see the need for people that need instruction for a nonprofit. So a lot of people want to open their own business. Well, we show you how to do that from start to finish. We show you how to get grants. We show you how to actually advertise your business. Business credit is involved as well. 
show you how to get that as well. So that is directed by me. It's facilitated by me. The class is fully online and you actually meet with me bi-weekly once every two weeks. So that's the nonprofit mentorship program. We also have yoga classes. So our yoga classes are anywhere between 4 to 9 p.m. We have yoga. Uh, we have Christian yoga, which focuses on Christian principles, the Bible. Um, we also have beginner's yoga. So people that are straight, <laughs> new to yoga, uh, we have a beginner's class for you. We also have vinyasa. We have hatha yoga. And we have, uh, we're going to start back chair yoga. So that's under our physical health umbrella, right? So we have dimensions. We have phys physical, nutritional, sexual, and emotional health. Then we have meditation. So we have beginner's meditation, which is instructed. All of our classes are online, by the way. They're not in a locality. <laughs> you take our classes online at the time that um, we have them. But yes, all of our classes are online. Thanks for listening to Patrons and Partnerships. The second half of the interview will post on October 21st. If you know of an individual or organization you'd like to recommend for an interview, email us at lpsfprogram at gmail.com. To listen to more episodes, find us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. Be sure to check out the Elotra County Library on Spotify while you're there for chill playlists to read to, handpicked by our librarians. Do you have a budding scientist in the family? Join us this fall for Science Tales, a weekly Zoom series every Tuesday at 11 a.m. from September 28th to November 2nd. Library staff have teamed up with UF, Santa Fe, and Alachua County Audubon for a STEM lesson on topics ranging from ornithology to rocketry. For more information, visit our site at aclib.us slash science tales. Storytime with the Library is back with Storytime on the Green. Visit our site at aclib.us slash storytime on the green, one word, for times and locations. Partnership staff hold story times at Smoky Bear Park off 15th every Thursday at 10 a.m. And we have a representative from the Dolly Parton Imagination Library to help you sign up if you live in the 32609 zip code. The Dolly Parton Imagination Library provides preschool children with a free book every month until age five. If you have a child under age five in your household, it's a great opportunity to encourage their love of reading. Residents of the 32641 and 32601 zip codes can pre-register now.